This Week in Startups is brought to you by Walker Corporate Law, specializing in the representation of entrepreneurs. Visit walkercorporatelaw.com. Capterra, the leading free online resource to find your best software solutions. Visit capterra.com slash twist for free to find the right tools to make 2019 the year for your business. And Silicon Valley Bank, purpose built for founders and high growth startups, Silicon Valley Bank offers banking and financial solutions that fit every stage of the startup journey. Visit svb.com forward slash next to learn more. Silicon Valley Bank, Ideas Bank here. Upcoming launch events. Apply for our next Founder University September 9th and 10th in San Francisco at founder.university. And get your free Founder Pass for Launch Scale in San Francisco October 7th and 8th at launchscale.net slash tickets. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to This Week in Startups. I'm your host, Jason Calacanis, and I am thrilled with the guests you're going to get to hear from today. I have been friends with her for a couple of years, and she's had an amazing career uh, and is now on her second company and her book that you know, Girl Boss, spent a couple of months at the to- top of the New York Times bestseller. It was released back in 2014 when she was doing Nasty Gal. Her new company is Girl Boss. Her name is Sophia Amorosa. Welcome to the program, finally. Yeah, finally. Finally, we did Been it. trying to do this for so long. Yeah. You had to busy. come to LA. I had to come to LA to do I it. I know. I figured if I come to LA, then there's no excuse. No then excuse. Then I'll really know if you're ducking no, me. No. I'm like, I'm outside your house with a camera and two <laughs> microphones. Not creepy at all. I drove an hour, pretty much the, the length of a flight to San Francisco. So Basically, yeah. Which yeah. I think every drive and commute is now an hour in Los Angeles. It is bonkers here. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thanks for coming on the pod. Um, I guess, tell everybody what Girl Boss is now, because we know it was a book. Mm-hmm. That it became a TV show, yes. but now it's a specifically a company yes. that I believe does two main things: the the Girl Boss rallies, which you've done a half dozen of our conference, yeah, your conference, and then you're doing like a LinkedIn for women, but That's also what people for men. are calling it. Yeah. That's which is really interesting yeah. when you know the validation from the outside tells you what it is or what yeah. they want it to be yeah. and i feel like the headlines once when we launched a month ago were kind of telling us what the white space was in a way because we're still pretty malleable we just yeah. launched in public beta um june 29th uh and girl boss is now a digital a professional network for ambitious women and yeah. so when i say professional i mean anybody who takes their career seriously it's not necessarily a place for people who have typical resumes all of us are in the gig economy or side hustling or freelancing or we're creatives or we have ambitions beyond what it is that we can currently fit on a resume yeah. so it's a place where i hope that women can come and celebrate and share not just what they do and be you know, evaluated on that, but also who they are, because we're all trading on who we are as much as we are on what we do. And you're a capitalist. You believe in capitalism. You believe in entrepreneurship. I mean, the book is yeah. basically, hey, I was a, I think you call yourself a, a freegan. I was a freegan dumpster diving anarchist who attended the San Francisco Anarchist Book Fair in high school. Yeah. And hitchhiked a lot, and made a lot of like weird moves and moved around a lot until I was 22 and started an eBay store. And I'd say the throughput in my career yeah. um, as an uh, unconventional, and I guess this is what I'm doing now is relatively conventional. But for me, it's just like escaping the kind of grind of the nine to five. And I did that uh, illegally yeah. at an early age. The first stuff I sold online were books I stole from Barnes and Noble and put them on as a reseller on Amazon and yeah. 10 cents less than all the other resellers brand new. Well, your cost of acquisition, your acquisition cost on those mm-hmm. books was low. So was you learned the low. first lesson. Yeah, I learned the mechanics of selling online early yeah. on. My you know rent was 300 bucks in Olympia, Washington. So learn that, but also learn the hard way that there are no shortcuts and yeah. eventually that stopped at yeah. a at a very early age like i'm talking yeah. teens yeah no i was i was a shoplifter too i think it's like something like teens can go through and i think it's like a very prerequisite to entrepreneurship because you're like always trying to get an angle on something or figure out a business model or resourceful, resourceful or just like doing something that's outside of the confines that already exist inventing something pinched. new you got pinched you got you got ar- not arrested you got the security oh i got arrested really 
Yeah. Wow, I never got arrested. I've been arrested twice. I got smacked a couple of times for shoplifting <laughs> yeah. chip witches in Brooklyn, but that's about it. That was how they would uh, basically, instead of arresting you, mm -hmm. they would just smack you like three or four times, yeah. like really hard. Yeah. And it's that was pr the equivalent in Brooklyn of uh, doing that. But you figured out eBay, and that was your entrepreneurial window. It's really an amazing story how you like found stuff that was vintage and then went on eBay and you started flipping stuff at that you bought for 10 bucks for 500. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, perceived value is a really fascinating thing. Mm. And I think, you know, even though people are used to paying $60 for a dress or $100 for a dress, building a digital product that eventually will drive revenue, you know, people don't it's it's a little harder to justify what someone's spending on when you're building something that has revenue and your product is purely digital, that mm. value exchange, I think is a little bit harder to justify, at least yeah. to get people on board with it. But I think because I turned shit into gold, yeah. um, and that exchange was something that the buyer was very happy with. Mickey Drexler, who was the CEO at J. Crew, told me like the value of something is what, you know, what a buyer is willing to pay. Right. And if that means a jacket has to go on sale, to sell, it was only ever worth $150, whatever the sale price was. Um, but yeah, my my career started pretty unconventionally. And I think one thing that's also inspired me with Girl Boss and what we're doing today is that I use the digital tools that we had, that I had at my disposal, which at the time in 2006 was eBay and MySpace. There right. was no Facebook, there was no Instagram. No Twitter. Or maybe Twitter was just about to start. You no know, it Twitter, hadn't yet. no yeah. Etsy, no Shopify, no Squarespace. It was right. a different world. Um, and it uh, it gave me the mechanics of what selling online really felt like before I went and built an e-commerce site eventually that yeah. became Nasty Gal, that, a lot, that became, yeah, nastygal.com. Had to buy that from someone really sketchy. Well, it was a porn site. To it, be yes. It was clear. like a bookmarked porn site. Ah, But it. eight grand or eight grand? Eight yeah. grand's a great deal for yeah, Nasty it was Gal. a great deal. It you were nastygal.org or something or nastygal Before that I was nastygalvintage.com and Perfect. then it became shopnastygal.com and then it became You fa you we call whatever. it faking it till you make it, right? You just, I've done a lot of it. Yeah. I might still be doing it. We all are. You too. hope you are. Yeah, I think if you're not like if you don't have outlandish goals and you're not faking it a little bit, you're probably not doing it right or setting ambitious enough well, goals. Yeah, you're not taking risks. You know, I think about it like um, Indiana Jones and what is it, the Holy Grail one, where he throws out, try to balance my coffee, he throws out the, the gravel the over sand, yeah. the sand over the like vast chasm to yeah. get to the Holy Grail right. he and kind of has to trust yeah. that there's a bridge there. Yeah, he was a pure heart or something and then he just something. like, he takes the first step and he realizes, oh, wait a second, there's a glass bridge here. Wow, and, and you yeah. have to take that first step. You what? I, what I and then love, you live on the bridge. And then you live on the bridge, teetering it's on death terrifying. and destruction on the abyss. And you hope that you're without sin or whatever, but yeah, none know, of us are. It could collapse at any time. It was really interesting too. Like you, the the pace at which that business Nasty Gal grew was truly stunning. You were flipping clothes, then got a warehouse out in Emeryville mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. I remember these like early days, and then all of a sudden you find yourself doing ten thousand dollars a day, and you decided. You know what? I want to make my own fashion. Mm -hmm. That w that seemed to me to be like the real tipping point in the business. Did you, was it always your attention with Nasty Gal to make the clothes, or was it just I need to make money to put a roof over my head? I'd actually say we actually started designing pretty late, and I'd say that was the tipping point of the company. The company's overhead getting too expensive, ah. and our margins getting lower because we weren't producing at the volume that you really need to to mm. have great margins. Yeah. What really allowed Nasty Gal to scale was that I pivoted from vintage to selling three of a kind and five of a kind, right. and then fifty of a kind, and you know five hundred of a kind at times. And I had multiple sizes, ah. so when you sell a piece of vintage, even though the margin's really high, you have to take a photo, write a description. Right. measure it, uh, all of the things that you would do to sell 100 or 200 or 300 pieces, and then that photo gets to live there mm. until that item sold out. And so um, that was when, you know, my first year on eBay, I did $75,000, which to me was like, you know. Mind-blowing. I think my W9 before that was maybe at the most like 20 grand. Yeah. Um, I was 22. Yeah. So 75 grand, 150 grand. No, I'm sorry, 250 
one point one six and a half, and then twenty eight. Wow. And that was that was when Index came in, and I owned a hundred percent of the company. Wow! When Index Ventures came in, and they invested fifty million dollars at a three hundred and fifty post. Wow! And I owned eighty percent after that. Wow! That is extraordinary. I mean, what a run! It was Uh, a run. It was a run for sure. And you got to yeah, I read. I remember reading in the book you got into a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars a day in revenue. Yeah, it was like, I'll get a bounce house in the warehouse. I got like a big bouncy house, like when we hit something like $100,000 a day. But yeah, one year it was like 10 grand a day and the next year it was 100 grand a day. And the VCs, when you take that big money, you you just went from bootstrapping to a $50 million round. There was nothing in between, no small round in between. No, I didn't know what that was. I was in Emeryville. I didn't know how everybody paid their rent in San Francisco. I didn't know what venture capital was. And Index propped me up. I mean, I love them. I love Danny Reimer. And they like made a deck and like were like here, present this. Basically, they just, they made it almost too easy. Right. But I was like, sure, I'm going to sell like whatever, 20% of my company and pump $50 million into it. Yeah. Um, But it was, the valuation was not something that was, you know, I didn't shop it. I didn't have like a bidding war for valuations. I didn't really even optimize for valuation. It was, you know, over 10 times our revenue at the time. And I think ASOS was really hot over in Europe, but Mm. um, those kinds of valuations are something that private equity would never touch. Yeah, You know, we had a profitable business before that and then it became unprofitable, which in retail is like not as sexy at scale. Thanks again to the Walker Corporate Law Group, a boutique law firm specializing in startups for supporting This Week in Startups for a decade. Thank you, Scott. From me, Jason Calacanis, to you, Scott Walker, thank you not only for supporting the program, but for supporting all the startups I've sent to you over the years. You know the Walker Corporate Law encourages fixed fees. They believe billable hours are inefficient, and they will give you a fixed fee so that when you get that bill at the end of the month, boom. You know what you're going to pay. You're not going to have that sticker shock when you open the PDF. Additional services, mergers and acquisitions, licensing arrangements, terms of service, privacy policies, all that stuff that you need to do to make sure your startup is protected and done right. And their lawyers have decades of experience, 10, 20 years or more. There are no junior associates getting on the job training with your startup. So if you want to talk to the founder himself, Scott Ed Walker, go directly to walkercorporatelaw.com or Email Scott at WalkerCorporateLaw.com. Scott at WalkerCorporateLaw.com or call 415-979-9998. 415-979-9998. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. Do you regret raising all that money and like them putting in a CEO, like a professional CEO? How did that all go down? Because that seemed to yeah. be to be the mistake if there was one. Well, that was my mistake. Yeah, I put it? in the oh, CEO. Yeah. I didn't want that job. Uh, um, I may It may have been a better choice to choose someone who had been a CEO before. Lo- uh, love Sherry, who was the CEO. Um, but I had a leadership team that was always at odds. There was a lot of ego and pissing contests and disagreement. And at the end of the day, even if our the greater team isn't exposed to those things, they feel it just like yeah. when mom and dad are fighting. Like you think the kids yeah. don't know, but they know. It, they know. They, they really know. And I think that bred a lot of um just we lost we lost respect um that was you know very much on me to align the company in that regard but i also hired c level people who had had careers longer than i had been alive right and said hey you know what's best for this company i'm supposed to hire people smarter than me and let them run and i'm not sure they ran in the right direction right um, but I also don't think I knew how to manage them. I had never had a boss. Right. I didn't think I needed to manage C-level executives. No. I thought they'd show up and diagnose the business and go do what needed to be done. Right. And that's not really how it works. That's not how it works. But do so. I regret raising fifty million dollars? No. No. You went big. I'm a homeowner. Yeah, you were able so to sell the secondary. There's, there's, there's a, a, there's a of, little secondary. Yeah. First money in out of a growth fund. Secondary. Yeah. Um, still and- working. Still need to work. When you look at the, well, that's good, actually. Yeah, when not you, one of America's richest women or whatever Forbes said, but yeah, was on paper for a while. Yeah. It was how, fun. How did you emotionally 
get past the failure of it to then get up again and say, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to kick ass again and start another company. Because I think I had the similar experience with Silicon Alley Reporter when it failed and we were at 12 million in revenue and raised money and then the dot-com era happened and 9-11 and just, we went out of business very quickly, like a year. Um, and it was really, I had to really think like, am I more than the first brand I ever created? Because yeah. I was, you get so identified as an individual with your brand. It's like oh, Martha Stewart or Sophia with your when brand. When Netflix make a, makes a series about your life, like yes. you're also just like, that's engraved in time. Right. Um, so in terms of moving on. Like emotionally, like how did yeah. you process it, I guess? Because yeah. a lot of entrepreneurs are dealing with failure right now probably watching yeah. the show. Like It was a really, 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 really hard time. You know, I acknowledge, I believe that even with very public failures and people guessing who you actually are versus who the headlines say you are versus who depicts you on a Netflix series. That was a very, very fuzzy time. But I think hardship is something that we all experience at the same magnitude, whether or not people, other people see it, right? right? So should I be given like a gold medal for moving on? I don't think so. I right. just think it was a much louder face plant. Um, but Girl Boss was something that was like waiting in the wings. Right. Like I wrote the book in early 2014. It's been over four years. Um, it, you know, like you said, it sold half a million copies. That's unbelievable. The hashtags. 500,000 copies. I saw yeah. it had 6,000 ratings on Audible. It I don't know if you like, know that. But uh, 6, not on Audible. Crazy. I wish I had read the audiobook myself. I'll do that next time. You have to do that. You should go read I it know, again it's so, like, and comment tacky on it. not to. That, well, back in the day, they did not want authors reading their books because as Harper or Collins told me, like a lot of times they go in there, they think they want to do it and they quit two days it's in like really and they're grueling. bad at it. I've heard it's really grueling. It is grueling. But if in today's day with podcasting- I could re-release it. You should and then do a commentary. The guy uh, Goggins, who's that crazy Navy SEAL guy, yep. who's like super popular. He's got a really good book about like not going to break me or something, can't break me. Anyway, it's one of these self-help books about not getting broken. But he does it, at, he reads it. He has somebody reading it who is the co-author with him, and then they discuss each chapter in between, that would be the power move for you. Okay. Because back when you wrote that book, they did not want authors doing it. Now, because of podcasting, they're kind of like, you know what? People want to hear from me. I feel like my author. commentary would be like kind of womp womp. I'd be yeah. like, I was so idealistic. I totally disagree with this. Don't be so inspired. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that like that naivete is still working, and yeah. it can get you really, really far. For sure it um, can. Being delusional, too. It's worked for my career. Just not knowing the magnitude of what you're doing, not having goals because they, you know, what you're able to manifest is bigger than, you know, goals would limit you. Yeah, if you which actually is, said you were going to go from a million to six and six to 28 or whatever it was, like you would be like, what? What? Not possible. Ha ha. Yeah. And then it happened. I, I didn't have any perspective. Um, and it's good to not have perspective. Yeah. At least for a period in your life. You can't escape. You can't yeah. escape losing that like naivete. Most of the time I find founders who, if they knew how much work it was going to be, they just wouldn't do it. If somebody literally told them like, by the way, here's the here's the map of pain and suffering. Here's your, you yeah. walking along that glass bridge to get to the Holy Grail yeah. and how scary it is. They'd be like, no, yeah. out. Yeah, and I keep doing it. I'm a masochist. Well, why do you keep doing it? What do you think? Well, it's all I've ever done from the time I was 22. Um, so you're I functionally love, unemployable. <laughs> yeah, totally unemployable. <laughs> Same. Um, you know, Girl Boss is a really, really important mission. It's something that became a community after I wrote the book and was only able to focus on it. Then in 2017, when Nasty Gal ended, which is something that I, you know, kind of wanted to do because then it became as loud as Nasty Gal. Girl Boss became really, really loud. Um, and I watched these girls on the book tour back in 2014, waiting get, to get their book signed, but exchanging business cards while they were waiting in line. And That's I dope. was like, there's something here. Yeah. This girl who's in her mid 20s, early 30s, and you know, our, our community in terms of age really runs the gamut, but there's no place for the woman who isn't a, you know, a C-level, VP level, like their networks are built. Right. There's very few places for the woman who hasn't gotten that far in her career to have the same thing. And it's yeah. so easy to connect them. Um, so I just went running headfirst in a girl boss, you know, 
Nasty Gal filed for Chapter 11 the day Trump was elected. Wow, that's prophetic. Yeah. And in March, March 4th of 2017, so five months later, four months later, held the first girl boss rally for 500 women and 50 speakers. What Got happens at a sponsors. Girl bo- boss what happens? Rally. Yeah. Well, we just held our fifth at UCLA. We had 1,800 women and wow. 120 speakers and 10 rooms of programming. Yeah. And that's where I kind of like announced and launched the girl boss networking platform. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's everything from, you know, inspiration to education, a lot of education. So there's a lot of conferences where, yay, inspiration, but now you leave and then what happens? What happens uh, next? Or, you know, do, did I get really tactical tools that I can take back into my life and apply? How can we make the Girl Boss Rally extend beyond inspiration or people, you know, meeting for one day? Uh, and what we're able to do digitally now is is really just an extension of what's happened naturally before I've even been able to catch this community. Yeah. And and the events are really beautifully done, I noticed. Like Thanks. it seems to me like one of your superpower. I always think about like the entrepreneur's superpower and yours is you have just such a unique sense of fashion and creating a moment. Like whether it's Thank your you. Instagram or like in the real world, it is truly a skill to be able to say like, here is a moment in time. And whenever your girl boss rallies go off, if you click on one of the, I uh, clicked on one of the hashtags and the participation level amongst people there, taking pictures, introducing themselves, sharing each other, taking selfies. I know like Instagram gets looked down on, I guess, um, or it's easy to kind of make fun of Instagram, but those Instagrammable moments where people are sharing something meaningful to them, it seems like something you just nail. And then that creates this massive virality where people are like, I want to go to the next girl boss round. Yeah, women from 31 countries and 40 states huh. flew themselves in That's for the girl boss rally. Yeah. Um, I'd say the throughput between Nasty Gal and girl boss is that what I do seems to evoke a feeling. So mm. it's more than a product. It's more than a motorcycle jacket. Yeah. When I put a motorcycle jacket on a girl who had a handbag, who was going somewhere, who had sunglasses on at the time, that was really novel to Mm. not just dump a piece of clothing on a model and cut their head off or not put it on like a very unrelatable, really like lanky girl that, you know, doesn't look like anybody that you know. I chose girls that looked like you or could be just you know, your most stylish friend so that online there's a mirror that you can see that is like, here I am just one step ahead. Right. Um, I can see myself in my my near term future. I'm trying on that motorcycle jacket culturally because I see somebody that's, you know, styled as if she, she's part of like my friend group. Right. Oh. And when someone bought a motorcycle jacket, oh, nasty gal. Right. It wasn't a motorcycle jacket. It was like a prayer to their future that they could be just a little bit more confident. It was like a transformative alchemical um, experience. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's, I don't, I don't want to say that I'm, I, you know, I don't like toot my own horn a lot. I've been to hell and back, but that's something I really, really know. And with girl boss, that's very much the same thing. So we're able to provide that mirror with our online community where you can see people who are one step ahead of you. We're featuring women who are doing really interesting things. And if you're the woman in the middle of the country who thinks you're the only entrepreneur in your town, you're able to see people who are doing that all over the world and find inspiration from them and even connect with them and learn from them. And maybe you'll find someone in Iowa too, because chances are you're not the only girl in Iowa who's starting a business, even though it may feel like that. This summer, I don't want you trapped in your office trying to find the perfect software to solve all the problems you've got at your startup. No, I want you to use Capterra. You know Capterra. It's kind of like Yelp, but for software. And you know, software is what makes your team bionic and you want your team to be going through the 950,000 reviews of products from real software users. And that's when you're gonna make an informed decision and you're gonna get the right price for the right software to do the job that you're struggling with at your startup. There are 700 specific categories at Capterra. You know how to spell Capterra. It's C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A.com slash twist. Go there and you will get to see for free 
all the tools that have made us successful in our company. And here is my CMO, Presh. He was searching for email marketing software to use for our scale event this October. And you see, he sets a filter for what he needs. And then he selects four products to compare them with each other. Remember, comparison shopping. This is how you save money and find the right product. And he looks at the support, the pricing, the integrations, because integrations are super important. And look, he chose this company called Autopilot. I had never heard about it. Um, and then he goes to the, the landing page on Captera for Autopilot. And he reads those actual reviews from users, searches them, and finds out that it has the integrations we were looking for. So join the millions of people who use Captera each month to find the right tools for their business. Captera makes it easy for you to discover the software you need in just minutes. Go to captera.com slash twist, captera.com slash twist, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A.com slash twist. Thank you, Captera, for being a relentless supporter of startups and this podcast, This Week in Startups. I truly appreciate it. Speaking of which, let's get back to this amazing episode. It's really interesting, the the term modeling, like we would normally, if you said the word modeling, you think, oh, like a WAIF model, like yeah. from whatever Ford agency. When you're saying modeling, I think what you're really saying is modeling as in somebody I can emulate, somebody I can look to who's a little further on their journey, entrepreneurial, fashion, confidence, whatever, uh, life. Personality. Personality. And, and I can emulate them and I can see it because, I mean, when you were coming up, there were probably like Sheryl Sandberg. Meg Whitman and yeah. Marissa Mayer. And like, I, yeah, I wrote There were that. like three women who were in notable. In the business and, book section, it was like, you know, it was a year after Lean In, and then there was like Susie Orman. There was no girl who was an accidental entrepreneur, who was a mil millennial, who had, you know, already done a bunch of stupid stuff, who didn't have the pedigree. Susie, by the way, wants to talk to you about the blue bottle. Like, it's your basically $6 coffee. You're going to be, she's I very mean, upset about I that. I don't know. I'm friends with Brian Mehan and no I'm a big toast. supporter. I think it balances itself out that this is sustainable. Yes. <laughs> okay. You can Invest justify it I invested that way. in a cup that I don't have to spend on next time. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually touche. No, I'm I find myself in my later years, maybe it's the function of being a parent, like getting obsessive about uh, plastic use and waste in the environment in a way that I wasn't before I became a parent. Now I'm just like going crazy about straws and the pods and the like coffee any pods. any excuse to drive a Tesla. Exactly, well that too. <laughs> this is I'm a good person. I'm a good person, it's green. <laughs> yeah, well it's, yeah, it's, that's my, that's my. Mine nice. drove me here. Yours drove you here. <laughs> it does work in LA traffic really well. Yeah. Like self-driving in LA traffic yeah. is just miraculous. So tell me about the online and what your plan is for that. I signed up today. I was like, hmm. Am I supposed to be signing up as a guy? Yeah. Because I don't want to be that creepy guy who goes into like a women's space. Like in the poker community, we have this, by the way. They do women's only women only poker tournaments. But legally, you can't discriminate based on gender. Yeah. So like a couple of guys would show up every year and like kind of ruin it mm -hmm. uh, and then start it. I I'd think, say if yeah. men ruin it, then we have moderation for yes. it. Don't but ruin it. Girl, just Not don't ruin it. Site. Just don't be a creep. It doesn't creep, mean yeah. that you're creepy if you join. It means that maybe you have something to learn or maybe yeah. there's something you can offer yeah. that you're an ally. And if yeah. you're not, it's going to be pretty clear pretty quickly. That you shouldn't be there. That you yeah. shouldn't Behave. be there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a platform that's not an agnostic, like anybody do anything. We don't care. We're not a media business. It's, it seems like it's purpose driven, is it not? Like, it is very much purpose driven. you ask people driven, like, yeah. what would you like to get out of this? And then you're very explicit in like, here's how to behave here. Don't be a jerk. Yeah. Uh, and you give people like a little totally. list of like, like, don't be too braggy. Yeah. Brag, celebrate yourself, but don't be salesy. I mean, I think about it the way Ev Williams spoke about it at the most recent code conference, which is like, we're not for everybody. We're going to feature and reward content that is in line with our mission. Mm. Each each piece of content that goes into the algorithm, we don't have an algorithm yet. Right. <laughs> um, when we build it, will be selected by a human. Right. You know, it will it will be a place where we are, we are a brand, right. and we do want to highlight the things that we think are best and that will inspire the most people. And that, you know, I want it to be a place where the I guess the the most helpful people win, and not win, but the most helpful people are. Uh, promoted within the community. There's a lot of different things we can build within the product that build virtue into every single action. Yeah, I I really like the discussions going on. Like it seems like 
intelligent discussions seems to be the first thing you're confronted with after you sign up. It's like, here are intelligent discussions that you can join. Mm -hmm. Be intelligent. Use your real name. And I filled out my profile and I put in my girl boss moments. Mm -hmm. I was like, third investor in Uber, girl boss moment. Yeah, it's like raised my seed round. You know, people are going in there and saying like, took a sabbatical, had my first kid. Like, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to integrate all of the things that we're proud of in mm-hmm. a place where, yes, here's my career history, but that's not how I should be evaluated in the world. And we're not LinkedIn Monday through Friday and Instagram Saturday and Sunday. How can we build a place where we can share all of those things? How has female founder participation changed since you came into the game, you know, in 2006, 2007 timeframe, I guess, when you got started? Um, I mean, there are female. They're, they're here. <laughs> it's like you hear about them. They're on right. the cover of magazines. Right. Like they're building unicorns. They're yeah. what they're Many. doing is like dwarfing what I, you know, did with Nasty Gal. Right. The, I was the poster child because uh, there was one of me. And when right. I fell on my face, I was, you know, c- crucified because I had been the poster child right. and represented so much. But to me, it's just inspiring to see Emily Weiss and Jen Rubio and these women who have built these- Away.com. Away and Glossier, built these Stitch incredible- fix. Stitch Fix, Katrina Lake, yeah. um, Jen Hyman and Rent the Runway. It's just like every single month there's a Cows. new unicorn. Yeah. And there didn't used to, there was, you know, there wasn't anyone, even, women raising money, at least from what we, you know, and there's still not enough, right? It's like right. 2% of venture dollars go to women, but we're seeing them. And that, like I said, that mirror exists and we're able to see what's possible because these women are being shown to a generation who didn't grow up with these kinds of examples. And I hope the next generation takes it for granted you yeah know? that would be awesome yeah if they're just like yeah no of course oh cool we, yeah that's how it works right yeah we can just get venture capital. i think we have a long ways to go it might not be the next generation but we'll I'm, get there i'm shooting for the next generation to have three daughters and yeah you know like really have a vested interest in it being more fair yeah. uh because it feels like it is completely unfair the amount of the bar is definitely higher for women to clear market in venture capital i notice Yep. Um, and when I went out to raise, you know, I thought, listen, like I had, you know, I've I'd done 10 years, I'd built a massive company, but I also have an incredible business and opportunity with Girl Boss. But I was judged on the same merit, I think, as anybody else who walked in yeah. the room, which I think is the right thing. But at the same time, I wonder, I just wonder, and I don't know, I can't like, I can't be in the room, I can't isolate these things if a guy who had had the same experience that I did with Nasty Gal at that kind of scale would have had it maybe just a little bit easier. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting question. I, I'm know. not boohooing. We've no. raised money and we have amazing investors. You do. But I wonder. Yeah, would it have... Yeah, would you have gotten more offers, higher valuations, or quicker would it process? Have been a little bit easier. Yeah, little, yeah. yeah. I, it's never easy to raise money. I find, but for famous founders, I think you are guaranteed to get the meeting. Yeah, right. Like that's a given. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, but you're not guaranteed to get the check. Honestly, getting in some of those rooms is art. Is, I mean, at least one, and I'm not going to talk about it because they didn't invest. But being in front of like legends yeah. is a career moment in and of itself. Yeah. I kind of don't care about the outcome, yeah. but I was able to get in there yeah. and have like 30 people in that room yeah. and have that much of their time. Mm-hmm. Like I'm still so grateful for. Yeah. And it's a moment in time that like as you develop the company, there's going to be a B round, a C round. You did a series. A, I think you did C in series A. We did going seed and there was like a small seed extension. Yeah. So that's when initialized and Alexis Ohanian came in yeah. and they've been really, really helpful. You need to get the, the ultimate girl boss. You got to get Serena on the platform. Is she in yet? She's not in yet. Oh, okay. I think it's pretty church and state with him and her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, she's an investor now too. I understand. She Twitter, is. Yeah. She's like getting out there and investing. Yeah. It is uh, amazing, like, when you watch the profile of VCs, it used to be, like, Chris Saka and Ron Conway, like, those were the, and Chamath were the top three people asked for introductions to. Now, Alexis, all of a sudden, and Gary are, like, you know, Mm -hmm. number six or seven. Gary invested, too. Gary, uh, uh, Tan. No. No. Oh, Gary Tan. I'm talking about, yeah. Sorry, I'm like, I don't know. Which Gary? V. Oh, Gary V. Or yeah. Gary, yeah. I'm well, like, he's another one, I'm Did sure. Gary V steal the flipping on eBay thing from you? Because he's on his, 
Or did he learn it from you? He's I on his so, Instagram and Twitter, literally, going to garage sales. This uh-huh. is like Gary V right 2019. Now? Is going to garage sales. I can't keep up. And I know his social media is I crazy. I did not invent, f- invent flipping shit on eBay. Okay. But that's true. But you might have mastered it. it Gary V is basically <laughs> doing videos in 2019. I love Gary. Um, where he's like, okay, we're going into this. Uh, I think we're gonna. I think I see some baseball cards and some. Uh, I see some jer- some Jets jerseys. We're gonna go in right now. It's like undercover boss or whatever. Yeah. And then like his guys are you know with undercover cameras and he buys a bunch of stuff and he's sounds haggling. like a TV show pilot. It is basically like I think he's doing a yeah. TV show pilot. And he's like, yeah. I-, I can't give you fifty cents for this. It's got to be thirty five cents. And the woman's like, I'll give you forty five cents. He's like, okay, forty cents it is. And like he's taking out forty cents and buying a card. And then he's like, I can't believe it. this card's going for forty dollars. And then he puts it on eBay and they all high five. And I was like. I kind of like his message, though. That, I do, too. Yeah. He's like a street fighter. You yeah. Know? And I think a lot of people relate to that because yeah. I don't think he had anything handed to him. No. Except for... Yeah. Well, a wine company? Except for a wine company. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe he did, actually. I think I, I think forgot. I don't yeah. know where he got that. Like, No, his dad had a big wine company, and he created... The, actually, it was really... He was one of the first <laughs> vloggers, and people forget this about Gary. His you know, wedge into this, yours was flipping stuff on eBay. His was, he started something called Wine Library TV, where every day on Vimeo, uh, he would talk about a different wine, drink it. And then the way everybody became aware of him was one day, he's like, you know, this tastes like earth and or like rocks. Uh So like, and then he just picks up some dirt and he puts dirt in his mouth and he starts chewing on the dirt. And he's like, yeah, you see how that tastes? Mm, the like, terroir. Yeah. And then he spits <laughs> out the dirt, rinses his mouth, and he drinks the wine. He's like, yeah, and you get the dirt face. Now I want to put some rocks. And he like literally puts rocks in his mouth. Wow. Yeah, that was That'll like get his. some views. It, yeah, it was like a little bit of a stunt wine kind of thing. But it is interesting how the wedge can get opened up. Like you did this flipping thing and then it, you know, resulted in this giant business. And it, it feels did. like it's the same strategy with the events. Like the Girl Boss Rally is like this great wedge into meeting the most influential people in your space. Yeah, we're really lucky to have such incredible women in our orbit. And, you know, after a decade of building a massive business, I wound up with a Rolodex and starting mm-hmm. a podcast in 2015 yeah. got me an alumni. And mm-hmm. those women have come back to speak at the Girl Boss Rally, which we're so lucky for. But, you know, I'm harvesting yeah. my past. <laughs> For my future, that's all we can do is take yeah. what we have at our disposal and make as much as we can out of it. Yeah, and those you're building those brands of those women um, and featuring them where they, they might not get featured as um, strongly in other venues. Yeah, some of them are more well-known than others. And yeah. we just pick sometimes like sleeper hits who are like super interesting, who have a small audience, who hopefully we can help build their audience and have a lot to say. and. You know, that's what's happening in the community is like, you don't know the names of everybody who knows shit, right? Right. Like they're not, they don't even all have a personal brand or want one, but there are thousands of women who own like small consulting agencies on Medium who Mm -hmm. have something to say, who can show up on Girl Boss and provide that for the community and become this new breed of thought leader, which I hope we're able to create. If you work in Silicon Valley and you work in technology, you know it's not all about ping pong tables and free food and the hoodies. Those are all fun, sure. But there are a lot of challenges throughout the startup journey and no one understands them quite like our friends at Silicon Valley Bank, where I do my banking personally. Have a great idea for a startup and I do it professionally actually as well. If you have a great idea for a startup and you don't know the right way to launch it, well, Silicon Valley Bank has helped thousands of startups and is always eager to share their insights. Feel like your company's growing at quantum speed? Well, Silicon Valley Bank strives to support you at your pace, quick, nimble, and always looking ahead. With Silicon Valley Bank, you're not just getting a bank. You're getting a banking and financial services partner, along with the insights and experience and scalable solutions that founders need to move their bold ideas forward faster. I know this because I work with Silicon Valley Bank and I have for over a decade. And when I email them, man, do I get a quick response. So here's your call to action. If you're a founder, a potential founder, or just someone with an idea and a whole lot of ambition, Silicon Valley Bank has solutions that will help support you from the seed stage to the big stage. So visit svb.com forward slash next 
to learn more. Silicon Valley Bank. Ideas. Bank here. Yeah, it's clearly happening already. Are those a business in and of themselves? Is that like, is Girl Boss profitable as a business unit or is it just like you break even and build the audience? Like, do you um, see that as like the ultimate revenue driver or do you see like the online LinkedIn as the revenue driver of the business? I see long term the online LinkedIn um, as the revenue driver. We have a pretty large brand partnerships business. I have an incredible team in New York. Uh, and that's something that has mostly been monetized through our like media channels. We're not mm. a media business, but it's the conference. It's other experiential activations. It's our newsletter. What does that mean, experiential activations? Events. It means events. It means events. Right. So we do a retreat with Cadillac. Um, mm. This is our second. So a lot of brands are coming back and renewing. Um, so we have a retreat in... I haven't, we, last year we had a retreat with Cadillac in Vegas where 40 women showed up and drive like performance vehicles on like a professional wow. race track with like helmets and like, you know, microphones and nice. headphones and the guy like coaching us to like fishtail and like, that's a great state. Oh change. my God. It was so fun. And they were all, we all wore matching. That was my one contribution. Like this team like runs. My one contribution was we need 40 matching like mint green jumpsuits, like mechanic suits. Perfect. Great photo, photogenic moment right um but i we work with brands to have conversations that we want to anyway that are that our audience is interested in so we have this this is the second kind of round of it blackrock came back but we have a 12-part series on financial wellness mm. that is like very very deep it's essentially a course and that's something that we're providing through our newsletter but long term how can we find creative ways to have those products or uh, that education live within the product, our, yeah. our primary product, where we're not having them all live in disparate places. I think we'll always do podcasts with brands. We have a pod, podcast with Sephora, a podcast with Toomey. These are wholly owned oh, shows, wow. like 12 episodes, 16 episodes, like coming back for a second season with both of them. Um, and the brands are just tired of like buying Facebook and Google ads, they want to have something it's, that's more activating, like you're saying. They're having important conversations that yeah. with an audience who's interested in technology, who's interested in understanding the ethos behind these brands more than their products. Mm. Um, and that's something that we're able to give them. You know, the conversation that we have uh, on the To Me podcast, for example, isn't about travel or suitcases. It's about being in progress. Mm. Um, and they're deeper conversations with really interesting women that don't center around the product themselves, that elevate a brand and build a conversation that we're all really, really proud of having that create value for our audience first and foremost, audience for uh, value for the brand, and then obviously value for us because we're a business. Right. It keeps the lights on. It keeps uh, the lights on. Yeah. It is interesting how the story behind the product now is so important to consumers. I don't it know is. how that happened all of a sudden, but it seems like consumers really care about like who's making this product and why. Like away travel. It's yeah. like, oh, Jen's making this product. I want to support her yeah. and her vision. And oh, Peloton, I, I really care about these instructors and I want to bond with them. Like yeah. it's really gotten personal. Maybe it's the D to C thing, like the I direct mean, to brands consumer brands. Are people in a lot of ways? People yeah. are brands. People are looking for a connection to a brand that's not necessarily about a commodity. Because at the end of the day, we have a lot of choices. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. Well, yeah, no. I mean, if you think about it, like you can go get Amazon Basics for everything now. The equivalent exists, and then there's like some brand story. I just I went to Uniqlo. Uni is that it? Uniqlo? Like, and I was just fascinated. I was like, this is like a non-brand brand. And the clothes are almost free. Like, how is this possible in fashion? I, I know this is like not about entrepreneurship, but since you're in the fashion business, how is it possible they do what they do? Well, I think there's just a fatigue. I mean, one price, Uniqlo right. is super cheap, but also people are just fatigued by like, I think retail and fashion are just kind of like, it's not a moment where those things feel very important. But speaking of brands, I think great brands give permission for people to be themselves. Gives people they give people permission to be themselves um, and elevate elevate people's experiences beyond a product. Right. Yeah. Um, it is interesting how fashion is correlated with confidence. Like even, and I guess people talk about that with women more than men. But I find like when I wear a suit. And like mm -hmm. I go to certain meetings where I do, 
you know, CNBC, I wear like very specific types of suits by very specific brands that when I wear them, I feel great. Like when I walk out of my house. Yeah, I think it's I think it's okay. You know, I think if we is it okay for me to feel that way? <laughs> of course. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. you, you probably already know that. Um, no, actually, I don't. Actually, of course, and I don't think it's like vapid. I think. I think it's an expression of ourselves for one. And we're also arming ourselves every time we get dressed, we're arming ourselves to go out in the world and achieve something or feel mm. better. And if we feel like we've nurtured, you know, what it is that we go out and we have to see or who we are, our identity, I think um, we can all move into whatever it is that's on our plate that day yeah. with a lot more confidence. Yeah, I, I find like I have a little ritual. If like I have an important meeting and I'm on the road, I wanna stay at a decent hotel I want to eat like an epic breakfast in my suit after having like gone on the treadmill. Ooh, breakfast in a suit. Yeah, I like to go down to the lobby restaurant after I've worked out in my suit, read the paper, have plenty of time, eat the power breakfast, and then go on CNBC or then go to like my important meeting. How do you get your brain tuned up? I feel yeah, like mine, like question. I feel like mine's getting well, you have ADD or really ADHD, soft. You say in the I don't book. know. It's just getting worse. I think Is it, it might be worse? Alzheimer's. Well, you, I'm not you sure. You say in your book you were on like the a bunch of different pills when you were in high school. I mean, and you sorted out one you at a time. Away. Yeah, yeah. I'm on different pills now, <laughs> but not like LA pills. Not LA pills. Not like Anna Nicole Smith pills. <laughs> not on the yeah. No. Please don't take too many. No. Um, but you know I, the A. How do your original question is how do I get pumped for a meeting? Not pumped, but like. In the zone? How do you get like your mouth moving quickly? Or like, is it, do you wake up and you're like, blah, 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 I have conviction, blah, 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 CNBC? No, the, I, I have the 11 a.m. rule. Like I don't do anything before 11 a.m. <laughs> yeah. So I just told my assistant, like, well, F it. Like I'm successful now. Like I couldn't make my own schedule. No meetings before 11. I don't, I'm not good Live television doesn't work that way. And though. live television doesn't work that way. So when I do CNBC, I just make sure two nights before I'm getting sleep. Mm. Like it's for me, it's the two nights before, not the one night before. Because the one night before you start thinking about, oh, I got to get up at six. And then that gets in your head. And then you're sitting there at 2 a.m. like, okay, now I'm going to get four hours of sleep. And then it's 2 there and you're like, I'm getting three and a half hours That's of sleep. That's what I got when I was on GMA earlier this month. And I was like, yes. oh my God, oh my God. You don't have. forget your words. Stare into Robin's eyes. Blah, 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 blah. It's it is like, a little live TV. is terrifying. It's a bit terrifying. I'll, is this my, live? Do you no, edit this? We, we don't edit it. But it might, so somebody, it might as well be right live. Well, we edit it. If somebody says something they regret or they don't feel represents them well, I feel like my job on this podcast is not to play gotcha journalist. Yes. There's plenty of gotcha journalists. Like Kara Swisher can gotcha you. And she's not exactly a gotcha journalist, but you know, like she's hard hitting. You can like, jujitsu her. You, know, you can maybe answer. like, you know, navigate it with Kara. But and for she me, she asks again. <laughs> and she asks you again in a different way. Um, for me, I find since I'm an entrepreneur, you're an entrepreneur, you're going to be already so forthcoming with me because we're friends and we're peers. Mm -hmm. That I, I just I don't need to be like the hard ass like yeah. I'm gonna ask you three times and try to make you cry. You're gonna you're already more open in this podcast I'm gonna guess than you have been in any other one. I'm just open. I you're don't know if I just open. like was born with a truth serum. It, it can you're kind candid. of it like hurts me a uh -huh. lot of the time. But you know people are like, wow, you're so authentic, and it's like, what are you doing? Walking around lying? Like why? Yes, that, that is be actually celebrated? what everybody's what the fuck are you doing. Sophia, that's exactly I'm what everybody's lazy. doing. Everybody is fronting. That's just work. I'm just way too lazy. I knew we'd become friends when the first time we met. Like <laughs> you were like smoking a cigarette or something, and you just hocked a loogie. And I oh, just wow. hocked a loogie. And I was like, wow, this was great. Like, she can just hock a loogie. Where did we meet? We were at, I think, Alice and Pincus's birthday That's party. That's not where we met. No? No, I knew you well before Way that. Be oh, you're right. We did know. But we, we, like, partied. Yes, we had fun in the Hollywood Hills. Yes, I think we, that was, like, the last time I partied like that. Yeah. Yeah. We had many shots of tequila. Marilyn Manson was there. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yes, Marilyn Metz without makeup was there. Yeah. I was like, hey, we're going to see Marilyn. Oh, and Brian Ferry's son. And Well, that's always a peak experience right there. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Brian. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> if I had known Brian like Ferry's son was to there, Brian Ferry. I would have definitely got <laughs> yeah. a, a selfie. Um, well, listen, uh, continued success with the with Girl Boss. Thank you. You're, you've got a couple of dozen people now. It's becoming a big business. It's becoming bigger. Yeah. You know what I think you measured, should do? I had, measured oh, by. I had an idea for you. I think you should charge membership to be on the social network because uh, I think nobody has skin in the game with these social networks where like they're all free so they've all devalued themselves. Yeah. When I went in there, I was like, I did a search for the people in there because you can search and I looked at venture capital. I was like, oh my God, you've got like all the important people. It was like Whoa, two cool. guys and yeah. like a hundred 
female investors. And I was like, wait a second. If you're an entrepreneur, just being able to cozy up to investors in your girlboss. Yeah. It's girlboss.com. You got the yeah. .com. So, I mean, go to girlboss.com. If you're raising money. Cozy up. You could cozy up and you could send one message a day. Yeah. And you get paused. We're going to experiment with that. I think what you should. I, I have a, an idea. I think that's another. I always look for the behavioral hooks on the product basis because some people just copy other people. I thought that was like very intentional, as yeah. was what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, so I was like, what am I looking for? I had to think about it. I was like, I really don't need anything. I was like, oh, I'm a fashion disaster. I should put in fashion. I need fashion help. So I put, I'm into fashion. Cool. And then I was like, let's see if anybody can help me not be a disaster. But you should keep pulling on that string of like, uh, just charging people because subscriptions are going crazy right now. They are. We almost, we were a month out from launching as a completely paid product. Mm. And it's hard enough to build a business. It's yeah. hard enough to build a social network. I don't need to be the first person to, I mean, I guess, um, what's her name? Chairman Mom, Sarah. Sarah Lacey. Sarah Lacey um, has done that with Chairman Mom, but there's just no... There's no example of anyone that's done that right yet at scale. Yes, um, and I didn't necessarily want to try to be the first person. I think there. I think that we will be able to monetize the product. Yeah. extremely well. Yeah, I think right now it's just getting a you know critical mass of people in there and learning. Um, well, the and unlocking the there. one message a day to like you know you can just buy credits. Like I can have ten intros a day, which I guess mm -hmm. is in mail on LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn makes a ton of money. Yeah, you know what would be really interesting with that one thing? I was just thinking, the signal you give, if it if the person responds to me, and the, well, that signal, if they don't respond, then I shouldn't get another invite, or I should say one a day. But if the person responds, mm -hmm. and we become friends on the system, yeah. you should give me like two extra, go to two, two invites a day. Yeah, you get right? one more immediately. Like uh. it resets immediately. So uh. if I request you, and you accept me, a Even reset. if it resets, so an hour later, ah. if you accept me 20 minutes later, I can go send another one. Got Otherwise, it. I have to like wait a day. Got it. Oh, so you've already taken that into account. So if it is a authentic connection, you get to have more. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. We I'll want we want people to continue. We want to make it as easy as possible for our user to take the first mm. action. Which right now there's only a few actions, and saying hi to a stranger is a little scary. And posting in a global public feed that yeah. everyone can see is a little scary. We haven't built the social graph that we need to. Yeah. Um, so we do want to find lower lift ways, and I don't want I don't want the messaging. I think the messaging feature is brilliant, but I also think it's something that we want to test. Mm. Yeah, you got to be careful because it eventually results in spam or people trying to sell something totally and, but yeah. i also don't want to limit people's opportunities too much you should I want people to use it oh you know what you should do feature a member every day that would be mm -hmm. super cool if you're like hey this member joined today yes here's what they're working on in their career here's what they need yeah. help with if anybody wants to take them for coffee because that's Featuring the thing new that's what facebook did oh did they they yeah, they made the user experience worse for existing users. So they showed suggested friends. All the suggested friends for already activated, bought in users were new people. Ah. So those people got added and then activated. So right. Showing so the smart. newest people first to everybody gets those people yeah. bought into the product. So yeah. it, it is interesting. Is it true when about women, like in your experience, not helping other women or? you know, pulling up the ladder behind them? Because that's what I've heard from women. Like, women are not as helpful as they should be to other women. Is that true or not true? Because it seems in your experience, women are going going crazy to help each other. Yeah, uh, not in my experience, but I also haven't worked in the corporate world. Ah. Um, and I think that's hopefully changing pretty rapidly. Uh, but, and there's a lot more transparency and hopefully there's room for more of us. But I know that, you know, decades ago, there was only room yeah. for one of us in the room and we were competing to, yeah, you That know. seems like it's over now. Yeah, people seem to be super helpful of each other. I don't know if it's other. over, but my, I, you know, I haven't worked. I've, my name has been on every lease and, and in all, you know, every office that I've ever yeah. worked in. So I think I have a unique experience that I can't, you know, yeah. I can't necessarily speak to. All right, to so it. if you're a, uh, a female out there, entrepreneur or aspiring, get on girlboss.com. Yes. You're hiring. No. Mm, a little bit. A little bit here and yeah. there. Uh, check out the jobs board. And then uh, if you're a big advertiser, yeah, spend some money. Podcast, 450,000 downloads a month. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Get in there. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, well, thanks for coming on the pod. Great job. Yeah. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, we'll see you all next time on this week's right. Bye bye. Bye.